I'm starting with these pictures just so you realize we're talking about human being. We're talking about cavities, and here it comes. See, now you can see why I showed you that first picture because these may look like diagrams, but they represent what's um, what's inside of us. There are different cavities, and these cavities are just spaces that um, protect, separate, support our internal organs. We often just think the inside's a big mess, but really it's highly organized. Three uh, main cavities, and I'll go through these slowly. Cranial and vertebral, which is on the far left, you can see, brain, spinal cord. Thoracic, which is sort of the chest region, and the abdominal pelvic. And I'll be going through each one of these real slowly. Here we go. We'll start with the dorsal cavity. So that is the uh, cranial here and the vertebral column. It has uh, cerebral spinal fluid inside and a bony vertebral column. The cranial formed by bones of the skull. We call it the cranial. And the dorsal has three layers of protective meninges. I know I kind of walked you through these backwards, and that's okay. The meninges, maybe you've heard of someone having meningitis, inflammation of meninges. So our body, in its great wisdom, has protected this sensitive region with multiple layers of this durable uh, substance called meninges. Okay, there's the anterior view on the far right. So that's going to be the front. And then lateral view here, so you can see the cranial, vertebral column, and we'll get to the other ones shortly. Ventral cavity, and, and that's where a lot of the action is, okay, the ventral cavity. The diaphragm is a division, uh, and, and it's an important division. It's this apron of tissue that helps to uh, ventilate our lungs. It, it contracts and expands, and there's, um, well, I'll talk about that later. Let's get on to the superior thoracic cavity. As you might guess, this is the thorax, the uh, chest region, surrounded by ribs, chest muscles, the sternum, which is where the uh, ribs attach in the front. Thoracic region of the vertebral column has these smaller cavities. So we have the pericardial. Take a look right here. Peri, um, cardi think of cardio, think of heart. Peri means around, so it's the fluid-filled space around the heart. It's a good word. Plural, that is where the lungs are situated. So when you see the, the uh, word plural or pulmonal, we think of lungs. So here we have it here, plural. Two cavities because there's two sets of lungs. I mean, there's different lobes of lungs, but there's two, two cavities. And finally, the mediastinum. And that's between the lungs. You don't hear this word much. Here it is. Look at dead center. It's orange in this example. It contains all the thoracic viscera, hearts, esophagus, trachea, thymus, blood vessels. But the lungs are not part of this region. Well, you can see it's not. It's pretty clear. Um, it's not. Okay. Ventral cavity. We're still in the ventral. Okay, so this is the second slide. Still looking at the front of the body. Ventral region. The abdominal pelvic, now there's two words in there, the abdominal, which is the abdomen, and the pelvic, which is below the abdomen. So we're going to split these off in a little bit. It's inferior to the thoracic cavity, so that means it's below. And from diaphragm to groin, it's surrounded by this abdominal wall, as well as bones and muscles of the pelvis. Two regions, the abdominal, and let's take a look at this, spleen. Uh, we think of immunity, the stomach, stomachal, liver, huge. If you ever get um, watch a surgery, you'd be amazed at how big that liver is. It keeps us protected. Gallbladder, no line because it's nestled under the liver right there. Squirts out bile, helps us process fatty foods. Small intestines and the large intestine, also known as the colon, all part of the abdominal. Hey, look at these words. Proximal, we think of close to attachment. Distal, far away. Inferior below, superior. Medial, midline. These words, you're going to see them over and over again. Still in the ventral cavity. 
and, and that's where a lot of the action is because remember the, the dorsals, the brain and the spinal cord. So abdominal pelvic. Now we get to the pelvic, which is the lower part. I just talked about the abdominal region here. Now we're down to the pelvic. And as you might guess, this is where um, the reproductive organs, this is a, a, a male. There's the prostate right there. Uh, you know, when I say extra things, you don't need to memorize those. It just sometimes it helps to have a little more information than just a bunch of words. Urinary bladder, that should say. <laughs> Blad. Large intestine, uh, which is also called the colon, and reproductive. Okay. Here's a nice little review for us. There's going to be the uh, dorsal, spinal cord, pericardial, abdominal, pelvic. The thoracic and abdominal cavity membranes. Okay, what's really neat is the organs have their own membranes, and it's usually a serous membrane that covers viscera. When you see the word viscera, think of organ. It's going to line the walls of the thoracic and abdominal cavity, so we have all these membranes. One cool thing about them is they allow um, our viscera to slide back and forth, especially when there's serous fluid between two layers of, of membranes. And, and so uh, think of the lungs. When we take a deep breath, you don't realize this, but the sacs that surround the lungs are sliding past each other because there's serous fluid in between. Now, sometimes, only rarely, this serous uh, becomes inflamed and we have an infection. And it can be quite quite um, dangerous. Pleura, I've, I've kind of introduced this word before. It's the serous membrane of the pleural cavities, the lungs. And it clings to the surface of the lungs and allows expansion and, and sliding, but then the ribs are not going to cut into our lungs because of that uh, membrane. Pericardium, there's that suffix peri, means around, around the heart. There's a serous membrane around the heart, and that can become inflamed as well in, in, um, uh, in some diseases. It, uh, there's an anterior part that lines the chest wall. Wow, it's amazing. Look at, look at this picture here. You don't often see the heart with the um, pericardium serous membrane, but that's kind of how it looks. So it's, it's encased, um, and only rarely do we have uh, infection in that serous uh, fluid. Still in the thoracic and abdominal cavity, so um, it's not like we're jumping around here. We're, we're, we're pretty much staying put in this ventral region of the body. Peritoneum is a serous membrane of the abdominal cavity. Uh, maybe you've heard of peritonitis when that uh, membrane becomes inflamed. The visceral peritoneum covers the abdominal viscera. I know this is like all these new words, but uh, you're going to see these words over and over again, and, and they, they're going to get more familiar. Viscera, when you see the word viscera, I think organs. The parietal peritoneum lines the abdominal wall. Okay, and the peritoneal cavity is where lots of our abdominal organs are uh, located. And so the colon, um, small intestines, they're all in there. And that's why if you get a uh, abscess or uh, appendicitis that bursts, and we have peritonitis, and this fluid becomes inflamed. Retal peritoneal is the space between the parietal and the posterior abdominal wall. Again, let's not get lost. Uh, anytime we study a new vocabulary, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take repetition. So first time through, you might think I'm making no sense at all, but um, review, get comfortable with it, and pretty soon these words start to uh, make sense. The space between the parietal, peritoneum, and the posterior abdominal wall. All right. Uh, adrenal glands, kidney, pancreas, duodenum, sending and descending colon, and all of this is going on back in this region here. Retroperitoneal. So it's called retro because it's not really the frontal. Okay, we've been talking about frontal uh, uh, for the last like three slides, frontal, frontal. But now we're talking about the space between the parietal and the posterior. Okay, so, so remember the posterior is the back, and then you have the front, and then you have this retro region, which is kind of in between. Right. 